What's up, y'all? Welcome back to BNL Reactions. Today we're gonna be looking at how B ants and bees broke the game by Tier Zoo. Um, this is like the fourth or fifth Tier Zoo video I reacted to. So check out my other videos if you haven't seen that already. And let's go ahead and get it started. Money making season and being broke is treason. Insects are one of the most overpowered factions in the game. With their incredible selection of powerful abilities, it's no surprise they've been the dominant force in the meta in basically every biome in the game. What However, the heck there is, is one that? been the dominant force what is this in, shooting? in basically every what is biome that? in the game. However, there is one subset of insects that really pushes the limits of what I think constitutes fair play in the game of life. I'm talking about Hymenoptera, the group consisting of bees, ants, and wasps. There are two factors that make this faction so powerful. The first is their incredible list of abilities. They got flying the ants too. That their most so flying ants is basically like bees, if they all the same family. Powerful. Kinda. The first is their incredible list of abilities. And the second is that their most famous strategy is basically an exploit of the game engine. First, their abilities. Long story short, Hymenopterans have a dozen or so powerful abilities, some of which are plenty broken enough. Dang, they ate a rat. When combined, synergistic powerful it abilities. It took out a rat. Some of which are plenty broken enough on their own. But when combined, synergistic Bruh, wasps take out rats. Some of which are plenty broken enough on their own. But when combined, oh, they, OP. they become ridiculously overpowered. We're going to need to sort of rapid fire through this list just to keep this video reasonably paced. The first and most important ability of theirs is flight. Part of the reason that mm -hmm. insects in general are a top tier class is that they have access to the flight ability. They were the first major class to gain access to this perk, unlocking it several expansions before reptiles, birds, and mammals. It's tough to overstate the utility that this ability provides, but I do have a whole video on it if you want to know more. One thing to note is that while most flying builds had to modulate an entire pair of limbs in order to use this ability, insects did not. This gives insects, and especially Hymenopterans, access to ability combinations not seen anywhere else in the game. Not so goody, so goody. Next is aposematic coloration. What? Many Hymenopterans are apple, apple, huh? <laughs> Say it again, aposematic. Anywhere else in the game. Next is aposematic coloration. Many Hymenopterans are brightly colored, which lowers their stealth stat and greatly buffs their passive intimidation. It's okay. such a frightening defense that other builds have started to copy it. Next is exoskeletal armor. Despite all being in a very low weight class, Hymenopterans sport durable armor that allows them to greatly reduce damage from attacks. While not as okay. sturdy as, say, the armor of a beetle, it's still surprisingly strong. In addition to granting them extra defense from attacks, this armor makes flight a lot less risky, as getting hit midair is nowhere near as big a death sentence as it is for other flyers. The ability to Dang. fly usually is only even remotely viable when the user makes a lot of sacrifices in terms of bulk and defense. Oh, we got hit! Viable when the user makes. The I was wondering, bruh, he got. Toasted, bro. Look at that bird. That's a bird that just flew in front of that baseball. They throw that thing on like 90 miles per hour. Oh, he is out of there. There is nowhere near as big a death sentence as it is for other flyers. The ability to fly usually is look at him, it just turns to feathers. Viable when the user makes a lot of wow, look at that bulk and defense, but this doesn't seem to apply to insects. That's crazy. Next, venomous sting. Despite being in a low weight class, pretty much every player needs to respect Hymenopterans as a threat. Their stings are powerful enough to completely paralyze other insect players and deal serious damage to larger players. In a group, there's basically no weight class large enough to ignore their attacks. Even elephants fear beehives. Dang. But speaking of beehives, I think it's time I cut to the chase. Their most important ability is eusociality. This Elephant's the largest animal. Busted it and needs to be nerfed. At first glance, it might just look like normal team strategy, similar to cooperative hunting or herd behavior. Mm -hmm. But in truth, it goes so far beyond that. You social insects are organized on a level that not even humans can contest. 
Despite not having a particularly high intelligence stat, a hive can build extremely complicated structures without the use of tools. They can launch organized attacks containing thousands of combatants. They can capture prisoners, cross major barriers, and control territory to an absolutely incredible degree. Thousands of players will lay down their lives in defense of a colony if need be. So you may be asking yourself, why does this work? Why is it that in a meta dictated almost entirely by survival of the fittest, would so many players act altruistically, donating all of their foraging efforts, spending time guarding respawn points, and even sacrificing themselves in combat? The answer is complicated and gets into the very core of the game's mechanics. What Try the to heck? Me, it's not an easy explanation, but I'll do my best. First, I'll start with the question. What does it mean to win the game? Most players would answer, complete the game's main quest, reaction. Right. But why is that the primary objective? And what if there was a way to change the main objective of another player? So the mm. main objective is determined by the way the characters in the game are coded. Data miners have discovered that most new players spawn in with half the code of each player that cooperated in the corresponding reproduction quest. Mm -hmm. Because a player's primary objective is determined by whatever method they have available to pass on the largest percentage of their own code, in most cases, this means a player's main goal will be mating and offspring rearing, because this results in 50% of their own code being passed on. <laughs> You make me sick. <laughs> Hymenopterans found a way to break this aspect of the game, and they did so using an ability called Arenatoki. Arenatoki is a really cool Arenatoki? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Arenatoki. It is an exploit dis discovered within the game's files. Okay. Arenatoki is a form of reproduction in which unfertilized eggs develop into males. Why is that so important? So unfertilized eggs always become a male. Okay. Arenatoki causes more genetic material to be shared between sisters than traditional reproduction methods due to fathers always giving identical genetic information. The queen bee has the ability to choose the gender of her spawn. Eggs that are not given any genetic material from a father will be born male. Okay, so they can choose the male or female, okay? So here, if you'd like to try and understand why this is busted before I tell you. The relevant bit is that the daughters of a queen are semi-clones of each other. They still share 50% of their code with their mother and 50% mm -hmm. with their father, but they share 75% with each other. This completely breaks the game because of the fact that if one of these daughters wanted to produce its own offspring, it would only share 50% of its code. Their primary objective actually switches from reproduce to assist the queen in reproduction as much as possible. Because in assisting the queen in hatching more sisters, hmm. each sister is actually passing on 25% more of their genetic code than they would if they were to simply reproduce conventionally on their own. In practice, this means workers are more loyal to the queen than they are to themselves, and will act against their own self-interest if it means giving the queen the resources or opportunity to hatch more sisters. This is a blatant exploit of the game's code system, and it undoubtedly leads to some of the most powerful- They really just twisted that cap off? Essentially changes the Bruh. to hatch more. They systems. twisted that cap this is off. A blatant exploit of the game. No way. System, and it undoubtedly leads to some of the most powerful strategies in the game. Wow. It essentially changes the game from being an action RPG to being an RTS. Let's talk about some of the more overtly OP types of strategies achievable through Yuzo Shia. Dang, they just cracked that boy's skull. Is that these players take coordinated attacks to the next level. They can take down players of radically larger sizes than themselves. Even among the largest players in the game, there is very little that can withstand a full-on assault by an entire colony. Coordination also lends itself to the possibility of hyper-specialization. It's uncommon for members of the same species to have significantly different stats or abilities, since often these come with serious trade-offs. But when the colony can cover for your weaknesses, there's nothing preventing some members from specking purely into extreme offense or impenetrable defense, since even if these- A doorhead ant? What the heck? Job is to close entryways? It, he was born with a head to plug up holes. What a very, very specific thing. You was born with a big head. <laughs> you big head little boy. 
specking purely into extreme offense or impenetrable defense, since even if these reduce your own foraging abilities, the colony can assist you. On the flip side though, the ability of Hymenopterans to generate food is also massively improved. Through the eusocial ability, strategies like food storage and even agriculture are unlocked. The best example of this is the leafcutter ant, which adopts a unique strategy of harvesting the leaves of plants in order to farm nutritious fungus. But there are other ants which raise insect larvae as livestock. Other Hymenopterans store food in the form of honey, an XP dense treasure so valuable that it's one of the few reasons another player may attempt an attack on a bee's nest. Yoink. These strategies all ensure highly stable sources of food, which mitigates the risk of a mass wipe in the event of famine, which is normally the main downside of sharing food. They're the reason colonies can endure winters where foraging is effectively halted. It's a really broken ability. Mm. One of the most impressive things these players can accomplish is their structures. Between the organization seen in beehives to the sheer massive size of a leafcutter ant colony, these bases put most other constructed Dang. bases to shame. That's and an ant colony? From that whole bases, thing is an ant colony? To the sheer massive size of a leafcutter ant colony, these Dang. bases put most other constructed nests to shame and protect those inside from basically any attack. Here on YouTube as well, so if you're interested in that, be sure to subscribe and tap the bell so you don't miss them when they drop. Hope you found this stuff as interesting as I did. Thanks for watching and yeah man bees and ants are busted they're completely busted um let me know if you learned anything new in the comments down below subscribe to the channel if you haven't already trying to get to a thousand subs like the video if you liked it and i'll see you on the next video i'm out